This is a viral photo of a black woman standing nude in the middle of the streets of New York City with the words, the powerful words, stop killing us, painted all over her body. It's been shared over tens of thousands of times on social media. This woman, brave, bold, unapologetic, is me. She is the manifestation of a nerdy little black theater kid being bullied for being too girly. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're so pretty. No way. Are you serious? <laughs> it may or may not seem like it, but yes, I am a proud trans woman. Everyone's talking about it. <laughs> I was preparing to share my experiences in dating cisgender heterosexual men, but we would be here all night. Girl, I met this guy. Girl, I met this guy on Tinder. He's so good looking, and we have so much in common. He likes Shark Tank. I told him I was trans. He asked me where I was traveling to. Oof, that's really happened. And even though the word means across from point A to point B, I digress. We're constantly evaluating how men see us. Do they see us? Will they see us? But how do we see ourselves? The residual effects of being measured by having a man in 2020 still linger for cis women, trans women, and femmes. We are worth so much more than that. I love how author and speaker Sonia Renee Taylor says, Radical self-love is not a conditional experience. It's our inherent existence. This is our birthright. So why do we fight that? What are the ways to radical self-love for a black trans woman? <laughs> I am a Chicago-born Georgia-raised inhabitant of New York City, a transplant that actually made it out. As long as I could remember, I wanted to get out of the Bible Belt and find my own utopia. I grew up different, thinking different, knowing I would always be different. There was no LGBTQIA+. There was just normal and weird. I embraced being different because I had something to prove. I tried hard to be accepted, but the only thing reflected right back to me was myself. It forced me to face my own music. I had to be willing to feel all of that pain and take responsibility for all of my feelings. You know, I believe the reason most LGBTQ plus people are successful in their lives is because we are overachievers. We channel so much of our trauma into our professions that at some point, all of the negative energy we've internalized comes blasting out in the form of, let's say, a gold medal or a world record. <laughs> and when you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, nothing you do is good enough, so you overcompensate. We spend our development seeking validation instead of growing into our purpose and just what? being ourselves. <laughs> These days, folks share how it started and how it's going. But don't you want to know how you got there? These are my four ways to radical self-love for a black trans woman. One, be aggressive with yourself because you are the focus. Be proactive in getting what you need for you, because no one is going to do it for you. No one's going to build it for you. I used everything going against me to fuel my own experience. I remember thinking as a teen, I'm not who or what I'm supposed to be yet, but I'm going to get there. So I forged forward with so much intention, and determination. As trans folks, 
we take hold of the reins of our lives. We just paint our own picture of ourselves that has yet to be created. I often say, no one can take away my womanhood because no one gave it to me. I earned it. I worked for it. And I kept believing in myself, nurturing it, even while people pitched their opinions at me. I literally endured years of being told, I would never. But I did. And here I am. <laughs> Two. Don't give a duck. How many times has autocorrect told you ducking when you know good and well that's not what you were talking about? <laughs> that's a frustration. Give no ducks. Stop giving weight to the small stuff. There will be way too many mental roadblocks. Silence those little voices that stand between you and your own personal greatness. Zora Neale Hurston says, I have the nerve to walk my own way, however hard, in my search for reality, rather than climb upon that rattling wagon of wishful illusions. <laughs> what does that mean? Create your own path. Fear and adversity will always get in your way, but push it to the side. I like to say, What's meant for me is meant for me. As a black trans woman, there are people constantly wanting to love on me, but not walk with me. Duck them, because it's all a ducking illusion. I'm right here where I'm supposed to be. Number three, ethically non-monogamous joy. Polyamorous joy. It sounds alarming, doesn't it? Yes, well, what is that? Oh, this is just my version of unconventional ways to self-love. Don't compare yourself to other trans women. Take care of your body. Challenge the need to hold on to all those things from your past. Let them go. Things don't always show up the way that you expect them to, kind of like men and dating. <laughs> We're taught from an early age that things are supposed to happen in a very specific way. And maybe they're not. Maybe that's the lesson. To think outside of the box. Because what we thought it was is oftentimes not what it really is. There is just too often a shortage of black trans joy. Even as murder rates consistently increase, we must work on ourselves every day while prioritizing our happiness. Trust me, we need all of the help we can get. And number four, sisterhood. I save this for last because it's so unbelievably important. Radical self-love for Black trans women is rooted in our connection to each other. <laughs> this is what gets us through the world sometimes, second by second, minute by minute. My sisterhood is my lifeline. Every week, I have a virtual check-in with my girls. The most unedited, lesson-sharing conversations you could ever imagine, yes. <laughs> we revive each other. It gives me identity, community, and a safe space to be seen and nurtured. If it were not for the amazing, talented, and grounded women in my life, I don't know where I would be. I wouldn't be standing here. <laughs> to love yourself unapologetically, practice it. Maintain mental and physical wellness by examining things that you're afraid of. Make those scary choices. Seek different answers. Step out of your comfort zones and try new tactics. That's exactly how we bridge the gaps within ourselves. I encourage 
each and every one of you to never deny your truth, but befriend it. Be aggressive with yourself. Don't give a duck. Have that open relationship with joy and set up your squad goals. Because no matter where you come from or who you become, there is a value to feeling out of place because that allows you to make your own.